In this Skills for Work from Microsoft Excel video, we're going to look at two things. We're going to double up here and we're going to look at sorting and printing. By sorting, I mean how do we arrange and sort and display our data within a worksheet. For example, we may want to sort uh, text information or text in cells alphabetically from A to Z or reverse in reverse alphabetical order from Z to A. We might also want to sort numerical cells in terms of smallest to largest or largest to smallest. And we could also look at things like date and time cells in terms of from earliest to latest and from latest to earliest. So we'll take a look at how to do some of those sorting tricks in Excel. Secondly, we'll also look at printing. We're going to look at how we can print uh, an entire active worksheet, which is the default. We'll look at how to print an entire workbook. Don't forget a workbook contains one or more worksheets. So we'll see how, how to actually uh, print an entire workbook uh, regardless of how many worksheets are in there. And we'll also look at how to, and this is very useful, how to print out a selection of a worksheet if we're really interested in printing out a very small subset of data from a worksheet. So we'll begin by looking at sorting. As you can see in this worksheet, I've got uh, two columns of data. It's a very simple worksheet. In the A column, I've got sales agent, and I've got a list of names going from Rick down to Tim, from A2 down to A21. And in the B column, I've just got a location. So we're pretending that these are sale agents uh, working for a particular company, and these are the locations that these sales agents are based in. So what I want to do is I want to sort this arrangement of data. I want to sort based on, I'm going to sort based on the A column. So essentially what I want to do is I want A to Z. I want to sort in what's known as ascending order. Uh, you'll, you'll see how that works in a second in terms of ascending and descending. Uh, with ascending, when we talk about letters, it means that we start at the beginning and we work our way up. So think of, think of it as like as climbing a mountain, even though with letters it's kind of, it's not a great metaphor because there's nothing to say that Z is higher or greater than A except it's later along in the alphabet. It makes more sense when you're talking about numbers and dates and so on. But it's the, the, the process is the same and the term uh, is still uh, the same. The term, we use the term the same. Uh, so when we talk talk about ascending in terms of letters, what we're talking about is alphabetical order from A to Z. So I want to sort um, this column, the A column, in alphabetical A to Z order. How do I do that? Now there are a couple of things that you have to watch out for when you do this. Uh, here's one way of doing it. What I can do is I can right click anywhere in the A column, doesn't matter where, uh, because uh, we're, what Excel is going to do is it's going to sort the entire column. And there's a sort option about three quarter ways down. And if I go down to sort, I have two options, sorting from A to Z and sorting from Z to A. I'm going to click on sort A to Z. And that's it. What's happened is, and Excel has very cleverly uh, excluded sales agent and location. It's put Adam at the top and it's put Zara at the bottom. And that's it. That's all there is to literally to sorting. That's that's one option of doing it. And I'm just going to undo that because crucially what's also happened is it's moved these around as well. It wouldn't make much sense for me. Notice that Adam, who's going to be the very first, uh, is in Dublin. It wouldn't make much sense if we moved Adam up here and then he was... Uh, displayed as, as his location as being in Clomel. That wouldn't make a lot of sense. So Excel is smart enough to move these values around with these values so that they'll match up. So I'll do it again. I'll right click anywhere at all in the A column. I'll go to sort and I'll go from sort A to Z. And that's all there is to it. Adam is at the top and all of these have moved around. Zara is at the bottom and everybody else uh, is where they need to be. Notice as well that we have three J's, Jack, James and Joe. Jack is alphabetically first. James is, uh, follows him and then Joe is last. Same with Ed and Owen. Two E's but Ed comes before Owen. Uh, Carol and Kira as well. Carol comes uh, first. You know how A to Z works. Let's do it in reverse order. Let's do it from Z to A. Let's right click. Let's go down to sort and let's go sort Z to A. And again, Zara this time is up at the front, Zara's in Carrick and Shore. So that's moved up and everything else, Adam is now down at the bottom. So that's in reverse order. We can also do it on the location column. So if I right click on the location column, again, doesn't matter where, anywhere at all, and go to sort, sort from A to Z. Now the names are not sorted, obviously, but the locations are. So Athlone is first and then Wexford is last. So it's exactly the same process.
So we've seen how easy it is to sort text from A to Z or Z to A in alphabetical order or reverse alphabetical order. But what about numbers? What about things like, you know, values, numerical values and dates and times and so on? Well, look at dates first of all. As you can see, I've typed in student in A1. I've just uh, changed the, the example. We're going to pretend we're not working with salespeople now. We're working with students. So I've just typed in student as a label in cell A1. And in cell B1, I've typed in date of birth instead of uh, location or region or whatever I had typed in. I think it was location. Uh, so we're going to pretend that we're, uh, we've got a, a list of students and their dates of birth. Obviously, everybody has a date of birth. And what we want to do now is we want to sort our data based on the, the dates of birth. So it might be a handy way of finding out who's oldest and who's youngest. We do exactly the same thing. We right click anywhere in the B column or in the column that we want to sort our data on or by. And we go down to sort and we hover our mouse over sort. Now, this time it doesn't say sort A to Z uh, or Z to A uh, or ascending or descending. You'll still see the A to Z and Z to A because the parallel is the same, if you like. A to Z is the same as oldest to newest. Um, uh, and it's going to be the same as smallest to largest as well. And si uh, similarly for Z to, uh, to A. So the parallel is the same. But we just say we're sorting oldest to newest in dates or smallest to largest uh, when we, we're going to look at numbers in a couple of minutes. So I'll click on sort oldest to newest. And you'll notice that the 30th of the 1st, 1945 is the the most, the farthest back date. So that's the oldest date. And then Rick, we find out, was born on 30th of January, 1945. And then the most recent date, or the newest date, is 31st of the 1st, 2003. So Jack's the baby of the group. He's the youngest. And that's all there is to it. Now, again, the names over here are not sorted alphabetically. They are sorted. It's not true to say that they're not sorted, but they're sorted based on here's the criteria that we're actually sorting our data on. And the names obviously have to jump around to match the dates. So again, that's all you need to do. You just right click anywhere. You don't need to select it. In fact, don't select it. Uh, there are examples where you might need to select it. But for what we're doing here, we've got nothing else in our column. So all we're doing is we're right clicking. We're going to sort and we're selecting oldest to newest or sorry, it's already on oldest to newest. Newest. We'll go back to newest to oldest. So now Jack is at the top and Rick is at the bottom. So the reason that we don't select it is because in this particular example, there's nothing else down here that's going to be affected and nothing else above here that's going to be affected uh, by our sorting. This is the only information in the A column. This is the only information in the B column. If we did have other information in these columns, then we would have to select it and something else will happen uh, when that happens. So I'll show you a quick example of that shortly. Uh, but for now, we're going to move on from dates and we're going to look at now numerical values. We're going to look at sorting numbers now, not dates. So this is not chronological. We're not sorting chronologically. We want to sort from smallest to largest or from largest to smallest. So I've gone back to sales agent now and I've typed in sales again for B1 for a heading. So those are our two headings and they're bolded so they won't be included in our sort. What I want to do is I want to sort from smallest to largest. So I want to find out who sold the most and who sold the least. I've intentionally typed in very similar values. So these values are kind of difficult to look at and discern which is the smallest and which is the largest. They're all in or around the same amount. So here's where sort would be very useful. So again, you'll be happy to hear it's exactly the same process. We right click anywhere at all in the column and we go to sort and we go to Now notice the way now it says sort from smallest to largest. It doesn't say sort from uh, oldest to newest or newest to oldest and it doesn't say sorting from A to Z. Uh, it says smallest to largest because Excel recognizes that these are now numbers. Again, the principle is the same. A to Z is the same as smallest to largest. Largest to smallest is the same as Z to A. Uh, but uh, we say smallest to largest and largest to smallest when we're talking about numbers and that's how Excel will display it on the menu. Small but important uh, distinction. So we right click anywhere and we go to sort and I go smallest to largest and everything moves around. Now it's barely perceptible the numbers changing but you'll notice the names uh, jumping around. So we see that Ed had the least sales 115 uh, euro 25 cent and Gary had the most 131.26. Let's try it in reverse order. Let's right click. Let's go from sort and let's go this time from largest to smallest. So we want to find out who's top of the board, whose name is top of the board and it's Gary. Uh, which we just saw a minute ago is 131.26 and now Ed is down here, 115.25. And that's all there is to sorting numerical values. So the principle is the same. We right click on the data, we go to sort, and then we go from either smallest to largest, largest to smallest.
The last thing we're going to look at in Microsoft Excel, one of the last things we're going to look at is printing. It's very important that we're able to print out a hard copy of the work that we're uh, carrying on with on the screen. Uh, you may have heard the terms hard copy and soft copy before. A soft copy simply means the file that's on your computer. It's the file that you saved in your machine or on your uh, maybe on your memory key or on your hard drive or whatever. But a hard copy is literally a physical copy that you print out on a printer. So we need to be able to do that. The good news about printing is that in, in Excel, it's not. There are a couple of specific Excel-specific things that we need to be aware of when we're printing. But printing, by and large, happens in exactly the same way right across programs in the Microsoft Office suite. So once you know how to print in one program, you'll kind of know how to print in others in Word and and PowerPoint and Publisher and Access if you go onto them. Now there are differences in what you're printing because they're all different programs. But the actual the basis of printing, the the, the main concept of printing, uh, doesn't really change. So there are a couple of ways of doing it. I'm going to click on the File tab and I'm going to select Print. You'll see it here, File and Print. And the Print screen pops up when we do this. By default, Microsoft Excel is going to print, if I go back out to my worksheet, the entire sheet, okay, the entire sheet. And remember, we might have multiple sheets. We might have one sheet, two sheet, three sheet, and so on. It will only print the entire active sheet, in other words, the sheet that I'm on. So if I select another sheet here called Sheet 2, and if I just type in my name in A1 in Sheet 2, and go back to Sheet 1, and go back to File and Print again, it's still only going to print out Sheet 1. It is not going to print out Sheet 2 with my name. This is completely separate from this sheet. So that's something you need to be aware of. If you wanted to print out all of the sheets, we would have to do the following. In the print screen, you can see that the setting, the default setting is to print the active sheet. In other words, it's going to print just sheet one. If I run sheet two, of course, which I'm on now, and I go to file and print, it will print sheet two. The only thing in sheet two is my name in cell A1. But if I wanted to print both of these sheets, I would have to do the following in the print screen. I would have to change the default setting for print active sheets, click on the down arrow, and go to print entire workbook. Now remember, what that does is it prints out, a, a workbook is the, all of the worksheets that contain that are contained in your in your document, in your Excel document. Don't forget an Excel file or document is referred to as a workbook, and a workbook contains one or more worksheets. So if you want to print out all of the sheets, what you have to do is click on the down arrow here in settings on the print screen, and go to print active sheets. Sorry, print entire workbook because print active sheets will only print the sheet that you're on. Finally, we're going to look at some of the settings that we can change when we're actually printing. If I go to File and Print again, you'll see that there, there's a lot more here with regard to settings and features and functions in the print screen that I've been uh, actually talking about. First thing we'll look at is up here in Copies. That just means how many copies of this thing that you're printing do you want? Now, of course, the thing can be either the selection that you've got selected, it can be the entire workbook, or it can be the entire active sheet. So I'm just going to go back to print active sheet. By default, the copy is one. Okay, that's the, the, the number that's going to be in the copies box. But we can click on the little spinners here, the little arrows or spinners as they're called, by increasing or decreasing it down to one. One is obviously the lowest you can go. You can also type a number in directly. If I wanted 50 copies, I could type in 50. Delete that back, just type in one again. So that's the first setting we can change. The second setting we can change is the actual printer that we're printing to. You can see that I have a HP DeskJet 2510 uh, printer. It's currently offline. That in my case, that means it's simply switched off. Uh, but there's a little tick beside it, which means that it's the default printer. Now we won't go too far into this, but in an office environment or maybe in a in a busy uh, business environment, your computer will probably be on a network. In other words, it's going to be connected to a network with lots of other computers, and probably different printers. You're not just going to have one printer in an office. You'll normally have a selection of printers in an office. And there's the thinking behind this, and that is that if one printer is out of action, it wouldn't make much sense if everybody had to sit around waiting for that printer to get fixed. They wouldn't be able to do any printing. So instead, they normally have multiple printers, maybe three or four printers, depending on the size of the office. They're going to, you know, bigger offices will obviously have more printers. So that if a printer is out of action, what you can do is you can click on the down arrow, and you will see other printers listed here. We'll ignore all this stuff, print PDF and XPS document writer. If there were other physical printers, actual printers on a network, you would see them here. So if one printer was, for instance, as this one is offline, we could select another printer and then we could 
click or we could print to that printer then instead. We could also make that the default printer if we wanted to. Uh, so that's that option there, just selecting the printer that you're printing to. Your default printer is what it, the document will go to by default without you specifying it. But if for whatever reason the printer was out of action, if it was being serviced, if it was turned off, maybe if there was a very busy queue in it and there was lots of jobs on the printer, that's what they call them when lots of people print at the same time and say the printer has a lot of jobs to get through. You could just say, look, I'm not going to wait. I don't want to wait in the queue. And you could go to another printer. So that's that option there. We've already seen this here, settings, print active sheets. We can print the active sheet, print the entire workbook or print a selection. We can print a range of pages as well. So you can see that this current printout is going to come out on two pages. Not a great example. Sometimes in very large workbooks or worksheets, you may have 10, 50, 20 pages. It depends on how much data you're printing. If you only wanted the first 10 pages, what you could do is you could click in the pages box here and you could type in, let's say, one and then over here, you could click and you could type in 10. And what that will do is it will only print the first 10 pages maybe of a 50 page document or a 40 page document. So you could fine tune the numbers there yourself. You don't need to start at one of course if the stuff that you wanted to were interested in getting at and printing was on page five. You could start on page five and you could maybe go to page seven. So you could just print out those two pages. There's really nothing else here that we need to look at. We'll ignore Collator because we're not doing multiple copies of, of, of the same document. Uh, orientation, uh, there's really only two orientations. Portrait is what we're currently printing at. Landscape looks like this. That's when the page is literally turned on its side. That can, um, that can be useful sometimes because if I go back to Portrait, you'll see that something was missing now in Portrait. But if I go back to Landscape, you'll see that it's in there. And the reason for this is if we go back out to the worksheet, you'll see that uh, there's a dotted line and if it, your information is outside the dotted line there's a chance that it's going to be cut off the page because there's only so much page uh, so only so much space i beg your pardon on an a4 page so if i go back to portrait uh, which is here like this and if i click on the back button i'm now in portrait mode and you can see this dotted line here which signifies the edge of the a4 page and down here this signifies the edge or at the bottom edge of the A4 page. So anything outside this dotted line is not going to fit on an A4 page. So I can see already even before I go into the print screen that this stuff is not going to fit in the A4 page. But I can salvage it by changing the orientation and going to landscape orientation. So that can get you out of trouble sometimes. Now sometimes obviously you're just going to have so much space that even changing it to landscape isn't going to make much of a difference. But sometimes it will get you out of trouble. So that's it. That's all we really need to know for level three for uh, printing in Excel.